Hello, my name is Professor John Benjamin. This is West Virginia Wesleyan College, and this is web design. Today we will be going over how to create a scrolling site and how to add interactive elements. Right, let's begin. So as per usual, uh, it's good to open up Canvas. There's some code that you'll want to copy uh, from there. And um, so yeah, that's a good idea. Let's start there. And then once you do that, go ahead and open up Dreamweaver. And today we will be creating uh, a new file again, like before, like last time, on the same level as our index. Um, so we have our restaurant, we did T5, and that's because the CSS and the JavaScript for Bootstrap are going to be on this level. So we're going to go ahead and create file, select your site, file, and new file. And we're going to just call this scroll.html. And then double click to open. All right, and we're going to go ahead and add our own CSS. So this one has its unique uh, style sheets. So let's just go ahead and do that straight away. Um, go to your CSS designer and say add new CSS, create a new file. We'll simply call this, well, we'll browse first, pardon me. And we'll call this um, scroll.css. And make sure it's in your CSS folder. Make sure you're in the right place. And hit save. And OK. All right, and there's your scroll CSS. And then we're just going to go ahead, like last time, and we're going to add a Bootstrap nav bar. So go to your Insert menu, Bootstrap Components, and scroll down to Nav Bar, and then go ahead and hit Save. And I'm going to point out one little um, piece of advice here, you might say. Um, on occasion, ah, there it is. All right, like on occasion, this will happen you just lost all of the, the pretty style sheets. And so what we need to do um, to correct this, if we go and we look here in our files, one of the odd things that, that happens with Dreamweaver is when you already have one bootstrap file um, and then you try to save another one, uh, it just sort of eliminates it. And so we just need to go ahead and get it back. All right, so it's a little bit of a process, so let's just bear with me. Um, so what we're going to do is, if you're on a Mac or a PC, just go to some sort of file locator. Here it's the finder, and that's the little happy face there. And what we're trying to find is the bootstrap file that we lost. And so the name of it can be found here, because you can see here in your code, the CSS is looking for this bootstrap 4.4.1. So go ahead and copy that, paste it up there, and somewhere in your computer is this bootstrap file right here. And then all we want to do is just simply uh, drag that um, into here. Now, on a Mac, I'm going to option drag because it's going to copy it. I'm just going to add it right there. But I'm not sure what option drag is on a PC. But now you can see that bootstrap file is back in the CSS folder and everything's happy again. So a little uh, snafu there. All right, so now that we've gotten past that, let's go down to our nav bar code and get rid of a few things that we don't need. And so we're going to get rid of the drop down. So come here, and mine is line 19. If I click on the nav, you can see the beginning and ending tags. And so what I'm going to do this time, I explained to you last time that we can simply uh, comment it out. But I'm just going to go ahead and highlight down to that tag and then just simply delete it. And the next one I want to get rid of is this disabled. I'm not, I don't have any requirement for that. so. One of the things I can do, I can click on the LI, the closing LI lights up. I can triple click on that whole line and just hit delete. All right, and then the last thing is the search form. I don't require that, so I'm going to click on form, see the closing tag light up, highlight that whole thing, and hit delete. All right, and so then what we're simply left with is just a home and a link. All right, so now we've got our nav bar. Let's go ahead. First, let's make um, some containers. So I'm going to close up the nav bar so it looks a little neater. And I'm going to put my cursor at the end and hit return. And let's go to insert and container fluid. All right. And then I'm going to hit return. And I'm going to just simply copy this again. I want two containers. So just copy and paste that. All right, so down here I have container fluid. I want this to be my header. So I'm going to simply hit space and header. And then I want this one to be my footer, so space and footer. 
All right, so in the header, just put the name of your restaurant. So I'm going to say Chong's Veggie Burgers. And then in the footer, I'm going to simply put Chong's Veggie Burgers copyright. And I'm going to go ahead and make this paragraph. So go back to HTML and just highlight it and select the paragraph. And for John's Veggie Burgers, I'm going to make that header one. There we go. Okay, excellent. All right, so let's go ahead and add um, four more containers. And so I'm going to put a little space in there. And you can just copy and paste this here. I've got this code that has the containers and they're already. In fact, you can go ahead and just skip right down and copy this. It's already got some text in it. All right, so go ahead and copy that. And we're going to paste that between the header and the footer. And all we have there is simply, um, I've created more fluid containers and then we've simply enabled them, named them one, two, three, and four. And you can see them here. Okay, so let's go ahead and add some selectors. So first, uh, I want to add a selector that's for all the container fluids. I want to treat them all very similar. So go ahead and put your cursor in the first one header here. Click on your scroll, CSS, and add selector. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this dot header bit here. So I only want, I want to apply all of this to just container fluid to all of that class. And what I want to do is um, I want to have their height to start be 200 pixels. We're going to change that later, but for now, just want 200. And then we want the text to center, text align center, like so. And then lastly, let's put some padding in there. And we'll say 20 pixels. Great. All right, so if you see here, you've got some containers, one, two, three, and four and a footer. All right, so let's put a few more uh, parameters in there. Uh, let's make the header and the footer a particular color. So go ahead and put your cursor in header and hit selector. And let's give it a background color. I'm gonna give it a nice um, kind of off-white here. It's a little dark. Okay, and um, for the footer, let's come down to the footer and give that its own background color. New selector. And I'm going to make it a nice brick red. And so unfortunately now you can't read that type. So for the footer, I'm just going to go to type and change that color to white. There we are. Okay, so now we've got a header and a footer and some container fluids in between. So now let's go ahead and change their color so it's more of a signal um, that we're in a different section of the scrolling website. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my cursor into one there and hit selector. And I'm gonna go ahead and give it a background color. All right, and then if you want, you can simply duplicate this. You can right click and say duplicate and then change one to two. And you can duplicate that again, change two to three. And last one for And I'm going to just change two and four to be a darker gray. So I'm just going to select two background and make that a little bit darker. And I can just go ahead and copy this. Hashtag B6, B6, B6. And I can go to four, and I can just paste that right in there and hit return. All right, so I've got one, two, three, and four. And they're different colors, so that way you know you're in a different section of the website. Because essentially, the scrolling site, each section or each container is a new page. Okay. All right, so now we're going to add links to the nav bar um, that scroll down to the different anchors um, in our in our um, in our containers here. Okay, so to do that, we're going to come back up here to the nav bar and open it up. 
and go over to Canvas, again, make things a little easier. So here I have a bunch of list items with links um, that are going to connect with these IDs. So an href hyperlink is, as you know, you would just put in the URL. But an anchor, you put in the hashtag and the name, and then that will link to the ID with the same name. So let's just go ahead and copy that. And now we're going to go ahead and just paste over our current list item. So you can see here we have a list item at, um, active that goes down to here, and then I have a list item link. Now if I open this up, you can see it a little better. We just have home and link there. So now I'm going to simply highlight both of those list items and hit delete. And then I'm just going to paste in my new list items. And if we go to edit, code, apply, source, it'll look a little tidier. And there we have it. And so in your nav bar, you should just simply have links 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, and that is the hypertext reference is 1, 2, 3, and 4 with the hashtag. All right, so back to Canvas. Let's go here and look at our container fluid um, IDs. And so here is the text that you need to add to your um, container fluids. And if you like to make things easier, you can just simply copy all of this and then come over here. And you here you have um, div class container fluid one. And so you can simply start there. So I'm going to start with div class and go all the way down to um, this div right here. I don't want to change the footer or the header. So those are container fluid header and footer. We're simply going to paste over these four like so. And the di only difference that these three that we just pasted have is we just I just added this bit of text here. And it's an, a hypertext or an A reference class. So we know it's a link. So there's the A class. And then the class is anchor, so it knows it's an anchor. And then the ID is one, two, and three. And therefore, these hashtags will link to those. Okay, so now we just need to add a, um, an easing. So right now, if we click on these, they will take us to the different tags, but it'll just sort of pop straight down. And maybe that's what you're looking for, but typically we like to have sort of an ease script added. All right, so we're going to have to do a couple of things for that. First, we're going to have to add something to our um, to our CSS right here. So here's a anchor between these um, curly brackets. So go ahead and just simply copy that code and come over to your site. And let's just go ahead and file save all just to keep things intact. And you can click right here to your scroll.css and just come down to the last line and simply paste in that bit of styling right there. And that's for your a anchors. All right, just go ahead and hit save, back to source code. All right, and now the more important bit is we're going to add some JavaScript. So go back to Canvas. And you can add this script to an external style sheet, but it's just a scrolling page. And so we can just save a little time and effort and just add this to our single page. All right, so we're just going to copy that script right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to add it at the bottom right here in your very last line. Okay, go ahead and hit File, Save All. At this point, let's just test this out and see if it's working. All right, so to do that, just File, Save All, and let's go to Preview. All right, so it should look something like this. And if you click on your nav, it should scroll to the different anchor points. Now, it can't really scroll much farther because we only have so much content. And so that's why 4 is going to go as far as it can go. And if we add more content, then four will go all the way to the top. But currently, we just have two and one that are really kind of working. Okay, so let's add some content. And if your script isn't working and your hyperlinks aren't working, go ahead with the rest of the tutorial, and uh, hopefully during class, um, we can work out maybe what went wrong. But typically, what you want to do if something went wrong First of all, we want to see if these are linked up. And so you just want to make sure that your code matches this right here. So each of your list items have this hashtag one, two, and three, and everything's spelled right. And then of course that you've added this bit of code here, and the IDs are all spelled right. And so you just want to go ahead 
and redo that. Now, if it's still not working, one of the things that I suggest, we haven't gone that far into the site, just go ahead and delete and then literally start over. Uh, that's really my best advice uh, in web design. You can go and sift through the code and find out that one little piece that you mistyped. Um, but uh, in most cases, especially in a small project like this, just start over. That's my that's your best my best advice. Also, sometimes the scripts aren't working. Go ahead and save and close out Dreamweaver, and then just open it back up again. A lot of times that works. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and add some content here. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is add a button. All right. So we're going to do that in the first container here. Now, before we do that, though. We've added 200 pixels of height to each of these, and that's just so we could see it a little bit better and see it working. Um, but now we want to remove that. So we're going to go to our CSS designer, and um, we're going to go to our container fluid, and then we're just going to simply trash that 200 pixels. And then you can see now they're just left, everything is squashed to its whatever the size that's in there, which is um, based on the text and the 20 pixels of padding that we've given it. But now what will happen is if we add more content to these boxes, they'll stretch accordingly. Okay, so we're going to go to box number one, to container fluid number one. We're going to put our cursor after the number one, and we're going to add a button. Okay, so we're going to go to insert, and make sure you're in bootstrap components. All right, and then we're going to look for buttons. There we are. And you can click on the down arrow, and there's a bunch of prefabricated code for each of these. You can choose really any one that you want. I'm going to go ahead and choose uh, primary. Okay, and there's a little button there. Isn't that great? Now the only problem is, is we want this button to have a hyperlink. And so we're going to have to change a few things um, to make this button have an H or a uh, hypertext reference. But before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and change primary button to uh, make a reservation. All right, and then what we're going to do is we're going to have it, when we click on this button, it goes down to the, the last or the fourth container when we click on it. All right, so we need to create that hypertext reference. All right, and so now we have to change a couple of things in here. Right now, the way it's set up, it's just a button. That's the tag. All right, so we're going to change button type to roll because I need to change button here to um, a href, and then in quotation marks, I need to add where I want it to go. And I want it to go to hashtag 4. That's the anchor. And then if I've changed this opening tag to an A, then I need to change the closing tag to a closing A as well. All right, and so the nice thing is though the class is here. Um, so we just changed button to roll, and we've changed um, button to A space href and then the location. Okay, so there's our button. All right, so let's go add a little bit more content. Let's go down to container fluid 2, right here, and we'll put our cursor after the closing paragraph tag of 2, and we're going to add a carousel. All right, so how do we do that? We just come over to our bootstrap components and click on carousel. And it's going to add a whole bunch of code here. It's going to look a little, a little scary and intimidating, but it's really not that bad. Right, here's our carousel. We've got two buttons to go left or right. And what we're, and we've got some text here that you'll fill in later. But for now, let's go ahead and put in some images. And so what Dreamweaver has for you here is if you look to the top of the carousel, here is the slides. And then if you come down here to image class, then you'll get a source, SRC, and it should say file and go all the way to this carousel placeholder right here. And you can see it lights up there. So what we need to do is replace that placeholder with our own images. So first thing you need to do though is go to Pexels, find some restaurant looking images, download them, and then we're gonna to need to crop them and export as. All right, so I'm gonna go over to Photoshop and do that. So here's a photo that I've downloaded. Um, I believe this is from Pexels. And we're gonna to go to the crop tool and make sure we change it to width, height, and resolution. And for that particular um, carousel, uh, the placeholders are 600 by 400 pixels. Now you can make that, those images any size you want, but the key is, is every image in the, in the carousel has to have the exact same dimensions. So to keep things easy, let's just go ahead and make them 
400 by six, 600 by 400 at 72. I click on my crop. You can crop it any way you want, and it'll change to the same dimensions. But I'm just going to hit return and file and export, export at. All right, and while you're here, you can choose JPEG or uh, PNG. I'm going to choose JPEG. 167 looks pretty good. Now you can change the quality. So let's say you it is a little bit too large. You know, you can bring the quality of the JPEG down a bit. And now look, 61K. You just want to make sure that it doesn't, you don't lose too much quality. Um, okay, but then just go ahead and hit export. And what you can do, if you want, is you can go ahead and place that in your directly in your image folder. And then Dreamweaver won't ask you to put it in the root folder. You can put it directly in there. Um, and But I'm going to go ahead and call this coffee at um, 600 by 400 px. Sometimes I like to do that uh, just so we know that I've got the specific dimensions. So go ahead and save that. I'm saving that right to my IMG folder. And then I'm going to come back to Dreamweaver. Now, do that three times. You need three images. I already have three, so... All right, so I'm going to go ahead and come down here, and I'm going to highlight between the quotation marks, beginning with file and ending in .png, and I just hit delete. And so your SRC, or your source, should just have nothing in between it. And you put your cursor there and hit the space bar, and a browse button will come up. And then you can simply just browse to your IMG folder. And there it is. So you'll need to do that for each of the three carousel images. So down here again, file, all the way down to PNG, delete, space to browse. I'm going to do frog, and then same with the third one. Go ahead and highlight to PNG, delete, space to browse, and I'll do frog. There we go. Now, if we scroll up here, but if you want to see it working and interact with it, just go ahead and hit save all and go to your preview. All right, so let's just kind of keep moving along. The next thing we're going to do is add a video. Okay, so we're going to scroll down to number three. All right, so here we have number three. We're going to put our cursor after the paragraph closing tag on three. And we're going to come back to our insert menu and look for responsive video embed. And there you have it. Um, so now what we're going to do though is we have iframe to iframe. We're going to go look for a restaurant related video. So you find your video that you're looking for, something restaurant related. And then while you're in YouTube, you just hit share. And you're going to want to hit embed. And you're going to get this embed code right here. So you can just click on it and copy it and back to Dreamweaver. And what we're going to do here is actually, we're just gonna, if you click on iframe, it'll tell you where the closing iframe is. It's simplest to just highlight that whole line of code and just paste in what YouTube gives you. And there it is. Okay, and the last thing we're gonna do is just simply add a map. So it's quite easy. Um, let's go put our cursor where we're gonna insert the map here in number four. Put our cursor right there and then go to Google, and go to Google Maps, and here I've typed in Tudor's Biscuit World, and then you click on this menu here, and scroll down to um, Share an Embed Map. All right, then you want to select Embed Map, copy the HTML, close that, back in Dreamweaver, and you're basically, you're simply just going to put that HTML right there after you're closing P tag, like so. And just go ahead and say file save or save all. all. Right, and there is the map. Great, so now that we've got everything in there and we've hit file save all, let's go to the preview. And hopefully, if everything works properly, it's all working. So I can click on make a reservation and it'll take me down to the map where at this point we could add a reservation form. But for this exercise, it's just taking us to the map. All right, and then we can click on our nav to go back to one or two, and we can try out our, our slideshow. And this is a little bit of a, a glitch here. Um, the link is an A reference, and it's scrolling, um, and so I haven't quite worked out uh, how to avoid that, but I think for this exercise, it's fine. You can see there that you can click on your, your carousel. 
and then you can go to three, and you can play your video. And as part of the file, and there you have it. And so then, what I'd like you to do again: hit File, Save All, and go to your files and put that um, and all the files that go with it up onto your site. And making sure you hit the put arrow, and then paste that URL in this uh, tutorial section. And then don't forget to um, go to your index and then link uh, T7 um, to, um, to this page. And then good luck on your assignment that goes along with this tutorial.